sunset occurs roughly every 15 minutes. Possibly indicative of time passage, but a little too much to not warrant mention in the actual movie. When Blackout hacks the computer at the SOCCENT airbase, the sound is heard that later is, the only clue, to what happened at the base. Curiously, Frenzy does utter a sound while hacking the POTUS mainframe in Air Force One. This sound is different from the sound played at the Pentagon, despite it being a, direct match to the signal at Qatar. When Sam's car breaks down and Michaela gets out to look at the engine, she leaves the passenger door open. When the car restarts and Sam leaves to close the hood, the passenger side door is now shut. But hey, maybe that was Bumblebee. After scanning his new concept Camaro alt form, Bumblebee's robot body displays either battle-worn parts or brand new parts at random times for the duration of the film. After Bumblebee backs into a corner of the power plant to evade barricade, there is a close-up shot of him spinning his wheels to make his getaway. However, the shot of the wheels spinning is at a different location, the empty warehouse that Bumblebee and Barricade had raced through moments earlier. During the scene where Optimus Prime scans a truck for his new body, the passing truck has what appears to be an Autobot sigil on its grill, but the actual truck that Prime turns into at the end of the scene has a much wider, flatter symbol on the grill, quite possibly a Peterbilt sign. When Simmons replays Sam's, last words, recorded onto his cell phone, it doesn't match what he said in the scene where he actually recorded them. When the Autobots arrive to rescue Sam and Michaela from Agent Simmons, Ironhide is the first Autobot to reach the damaged SUV and the other Sector 7 agents. Behind him, Ratchet is making his way towards the SUV, while Jazz and Bumblebee have their respective weapons drawn. However, in the very next shot, Ratchet's gun is suddenly in front of Ironhide, who is now making two short steps towards the SUV, while Jazz's gun has been replaced by his hand, which he uses to magnetically pull Sector 7's guns away. In the shot after that, Jazz is just standing around Son Sector 7 guns, while Bumblebee wanders up and draws his gun, again. When Ironhide transforms and performs a somersault to dodge Brawl's missiles, he is seen rising first, then falling. At that moment, he is already almost at the ground low enough to touch the ground if he stretched his arms. However on the next scene, he has gone much higher up, high enough to fire both the cannons on his arms then perform a mid-air somersault. When Lennox arrives as Sam and Michaela are supposedly strapping Bumblebee with the tow truck's chains, Bumblebee is not actually there. When the shot changes angles to the other side of the truck, Bumblebee is sitting right beside the truck while Sam directs Michaela to wrap Bumblebee in the chains. When Lennox tells Sam to evacuate the cube, subsequent camera angles from this side of the truck are actually where Bumblebee was moments earlier, but he's not there again, it is unlikely the angle was meant to be from Bumblebee's perspective. When Sam starts to run off and Michaela calls him back, Bumblebee is once again clearly not sitting beside the truck. In fact, the space he once occupied has the beige van he crawled out of, earlier in the battle. When Megatron transforms and speeds out of Sector 7, he causes a storm that throws all the debris of the site backwards, but not the panicking obviously much lighter humans. When Bumblebee starts stalking Sam, it is clearly around noon. But when Michaela and Sam get in Bumblebee and Barricade starts chasing them, it would seem like 10 or 15 minutes before they get to the junkyard, where Bumblebee defeats Barricade. But when they arrived, it was already nightfall. Obviously they took a break or shot another scene in the middle. After Optimus Prime and Megatron land in the city streets after flying through the office tower, Megatron throws the Autobot leader a short distance away, causing him to land on a parked car. After Megatron forms his fusion cannon, Optimus Prime has suddenly moved further down the street and the car he crushed, along with the other abandoned cars, have vanished. Also, in this shot, Optimus' feet don't make craters or any visible mark on the concrete. Yet, when Optimus is running from the Sector 7 agents, he's making huge craters while he is sidestepping cars. This comes with weighing over 4 tons and running 40 miles an hour. Additionally, Optimus stops at the intersection just in front of Megatron to pull out his ion blaster in this shot, but when it cuts to a shot to the left front of Optimus, he is only midway up the street, and there is a parked yellow cab at the curb which was empty seconds earlier. Funnily enough, this curb was where the crushed car was parked. While Frenzy is on a rampage in the communications room in Sector 7, he shatters the corner of the screen of the computer that Glenn is working on. However, the next moment Glenn brushes the dust on the screen, and the screen is completely intact. 
When Megatron kills Jazz, he rips him in half on top of a skyscraper. There is a small scene after this where we see Megatron fighting the other Autobots back in the streets, with half of Jazz in his left hand. However, soon after, Optimus arrives, and then we see Megatron, who somehow teleported back to the top of the same skyscraper, where he then discards the pieces of Jazz. During the fight towards the end of the film between Megatron and Optimus, it is shown that Optimus is about the same size as Megatron in robot mode. Yet, in vehicle mode, Megatron is a great deal larger than Optimus is. Similarly, Starscream seems to be smaller than Megatron in robot form, leading to the logical conclusion that he is smaller than Optimus as well. Yet in vehicle mode, he is nearly four to five times larger, seeing as an F-22 Raptor is a great deal larger than a Peterbilt 379 tractor cab. And they say they don't have scale problems. The F-22s are seen firing AIMRAM's missiles from the air at Megatron on the ground, an error that questions Michael Bay's ability to make action movies due to the fact that AIMRAM's can be fired towards the ground as they are specifically designed for air-to-air -air combat. During the first half of the movie, Maggie is wearing a slim checked skirt, but she is suddenly dressed in three-quarters jeans in the scene when they arrive at Hoover Dam.